Hello, we are CCH's Matthew Ackworth, Angelina Moses, and Aditi Prasad, guided by Mr. Andrew Galloway, and this is our video submission for the categories of crossing over mathematics and women in math, in our case, in the field of astrophysics and Katherine Johnson's significant role in the field. Katherine Johnson was an African-American woman who was born in White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia in 1918, who from a young age excelled in solving mathematical equations. She attended West Virginia High School, graduated at the age of 14, and was one of the first African Americans to enroll in a mathematics program at West Virginia State University, where she received her Bachelor of Science degree in French and Math at the young age of 19. In 1953, she joined Langley Research Center as a research mathematician for the National Advisory Committee of Aeronautics. She possessed the amazing ability to solve complex math problems with extreme precision, and she was even asked by John Glenn, the first American to orbit the Earth, to recheck all the calculations that were made by the computers for the mission to ensure that they were flawless, proving how skilled and talented she was at her work. Her calculations were critical in calculating the trajectory of the first American in space, Alan Shepard, the Apollo moon landing program, and the space shuttle program. She left NASA at, in 1986 after 33 years of service at the age of 68. Katherine Johnson and NASA used Euler's method to calculate the necessary trajectory for the mission. Euler's method aims to approximate the path that needs to be followed, but does not give us an exact formula for this trajectory. This is different from what we think we need to do in mathematics. We often are looking for an exact for formula to describe a curve or relation. Take for example any linear line. We can always put a linear equation in the form of y equals mx plus b and have an exact value for m and b. However, when we can't do this, Euler's method or other approximation methods can be used. Euler's method begins by having a curve that we need to follow and various tangent lines that approximate this curve. These tangent lines tell us what direction to go in for one unit of time. However, these vectors do not follow the curve exactly. What we can do to create a more accurate approximation of the curve is only following the tangent line for a smaller portion of time. This would reduce the amount of error between the approximate curve we are creating and the curve we need to follow. A quick example to think about this in a simpler, more concrete way is imagine a circle that you have been asked to walk around. If you take less steps, for example six, then your path will not be very close to the circle you need to follow. To make a more accurate circle, all you need to do is take more steps with more frequent changes of direction. What we are essentially doing is creating more tangent lines to the circle that we are following. From here, we can add any finite number of tangent lines to make this approximate path as accurate as we need it to be. The only problem with this is that it requires far more work for each time we decide to add in more steps. Here's how to calculate the approximate curve graphically. You first start by picking a starting point on the curve. From here, look at the tangent line approximating this part of the curve. We will follow this for a very short part of that unit of time. Let's say one minute if the tangent line's unit of time is in hours. For one minute, we shall follow the tangent line, then stop. This will give us a new point and as a result, a new tangent line to follow. We again follow this for exactly one minute, then stop, creating a new point. If we continue doing this, we will eventually create a new broken line that approximates the old curve very closely within whatever degree of accuracy that we wish to have. On the screen now is our sources used for this competition and video. This competition is only made possible by the generosity of our donors and the support of the Department of Mathematics, the School of Mathematical and Statistical Sciences, the Fields Institute for Research in Mathematical Sciences, and the Canadian Math Society.